Richard, just about to approach the Qatar Group of Festival, of course, is a meeting that the Hannans have sort of been very successful at for many, many years. And this year you go into this year's festival with a very strong hand, kicking off, hopefully, with Snow Lantern, who was brilliant in the Falmouth, wasn't she? Yeah, yeah, it was a lovely day um, for everybody. You know, a very special day, and she deserved it. You know, after everything with the mayor, and she was a little bit unlucky in the coronation. I think she'll definitely go to Goodwood at the moment. We might go to France if it's a little bit easier to, for the journey than, than it looks like it's going to be. It might be a late change, but I doubt it. I think we'll probably end up in the Nassau, but we're going to leave in the Sussex and have a look and see what, what turns up. But she, she's going to turn up at Goodwood, which I'm pleased to hear. And of course, the Nassau is over 10 furlongs. That would be her furthest distance she's raced so far. But she's looking much more settled in her races and indeed, as we've seen at home this morning. You see her there this morning and she, she's hacking up there lovely. They do go a different tempo, but for the mile and a quarter, the first two furlongs are uphill. She should settle. You know, she seems to be over that now. And more important than settling is, is, is her breathing and just getting her relaxed. And uh, I don't think she'll have a problem getting a mile and a quarter. A lot of the... The guys that ride her have always said she feels like a filly that get, will get a mile, and a, a mile and a half. So a mile and a quarter shouldn't really be a problem, we hope. And if you were to look at the Sussex, which of course is over a mile, I suppose you haven't got the, the, the challenge of, of Palace Pier. Would that make your decision any, any easier? No, it actually makes it more difficult <laughs> because, you know, that's where the second favourite out of it already. I do think Jim Bulger's will be extremely hard to beat. He's a very good horse and one of the best looking horses I've ever seen. He'll take a lot of beating, but you sort of feel with horses like him that he's been on the go a long time. And you've got to think that sometimes every horse has a, has a race where they run a little bit below par in a string of sort of seven or eight races. And you're half thinking, it might be this time, it might be this time. Normally you think that it doesn't happen, but you never know. I, mean, I think everyone is kind of relying on that. No, I don't want the horse to run bad, but if you're going to win the Sussex, you want to win it with everyone at their best. But it's looking a little more tempting. I think Chindit will go there and will ride him handy. And he was, probably should have been second at Royal Ascot in the St. James Palace, but he didn't get much luck on the way around and hopefully he'll get more luck there in the Sussex. Let's talk a bit more about Chindit then. How much sort of unfinished business is there with him, do you think? Well, I think, you know, he's probably at the moment looks like the second best mile, three-year-old miler. And he's going to take his chance and we'll try and get closer again to poetic flair. But, you know, he, he's looked like he does want further than Amar, but I don't think he does. And I think we'll just ride him handier. If we stick with the sort of three and four year olds, I um, must have been delighted to see Happy Romance get a head back in front at Newby last time. Do you know what? I think there's more chance of her turning up in the oak tree than the, than the King George. Um, I think that will be too quick for her. They'll go too fast over five furlongs and she won't really have time to get in it. I think the oak tree is a much more viable option. I've always said she'll get seven. I thought she'd get a mile, but she clearly didn't in the uh, Fred Darling, which really surprised me. But she's in much better form now than she was there. She ran extremely well over six furlongs last time at Newbury. And it like six, looks like seven furlongs might suit her. So we, we might take a chance there. Let's talk about the Unibet Vintage Stakes. Again, this is a race that, that, that the Hannans have got a good record in Olympic glory and, and tour. More King Taurus as well have won it. You've got Lucille in, in, engaged, who was very good on the July course last time. Yeah, um, he was. And he, we went from seven furlongs back to six. So him getting seven furlongs is, is not even questionable. You know, he, he will definitely get seven. And it looks a race he can win. I think he gets a three pound penalty. And we, you know, we'd love to win the Unibet Vintage. Again, you know, it's a, it's a lovely race and a very good race for, you know, for gauging what your two-year-olds are. And he, he probably will turn up there. There's another horse in there called Secret Strength, and he is no mug. Now, he would have a little chance at a big price, I think. Um, yeah, but, you know, we've got a good, good strong hand in it. But Lucille will probably run there if he doesn't go to the Richmond. He has a £3 pound and the other lad is, is good value at a long price, I would think. And you mentioned Secret Strength and obviously Lucille. Both of them ran in, in that race at, at York. Secret Strength was well fancied and Lucille was, was a much bigger prize. Was it a surprise to you yes. how, how impressive Lucille was? I didn't think Lucille would win that day. You know, he's only gone out there for a run. He hadn't come in his coat. He hadn't done much work either. 
you know, but ours are pretty good if they go up there and win when you don't think they've done enough to do so and they find it pretty natural. Um, and Secret Strength, he just wasn't, didn't have his act together then. And since then, he's run exceptionally well, over five, but he's always looked like he wants further. And I think over further would suit him. The, you know, he just, I think the Coventry team came too quick and they are probably a bit good at that stage of his career, but he's much more up for it and ready now and, and he's got his act together. And if we look at Lucille, I mean, as you said, he's not a horse that's particularly flashy at home. Does that make your job easier or, or harder to, to assess yeah, him? easier. I mean, I'm much happier for him to be flash on the race course and show what he's got there. He's never done anything exceptional at home. Snow Lantern's even worse. It does nothing. And, you know, they go to the racetrack and do the business. And, and he's definitely one of those. And that's why you look at the, the July stakes. He travelled in the first three the whole way. The first two was doing too much and went too quick because he's relaxed. He was able to go with them, but he was the only horse that stayed there. They finished last and second last, and he won the race and was in front for a long time. Um, so the fact that he is very relaxed she, well, will suit him for going seven furlongs. And if Lucille wins the Unibet Vintage, you can guarantee there'll be quotes for next year's 2,000 Guinness. I know we're obviously very early days, but do you see him as a, yeah. a, oh, yeah, a three-year-old for do, yeah. over a mile? He's not just a two-year-old, he's a big lad. You know, we'll deal with this year first. But if he gets through those tests, definitely he'll be a Guinness horse course. One more. I do it all the time, but no one's watching. <laughs> yeah, we've got Mum's Tipple in the, um, in the Unibet Lennox. This is a very good race this year. I think there's about 10 horses in there rated between 108 and 118. Now, you're not gonna win that unless you are at the top of your game. Mum's Tipple, I think, is very near, you know, but he will have to show his best form to be placed. And, oh, this is us, I've left in it, in case it cuts up, which it clearly hasn't. Um, he might well go to the Unibet Golden Mile. Um, Mum's Tipple, I think we'll wait and see, but it is, the Unibet Lennox is an extremely good race and always is, and it's a mixture of three-year-olds and up. And it's a very good race. Ever since it was put up in prize money massively, it has become a, as good a race as the, as the, of course it's not as good a race as the Sussex, but it ain't far off. Okay, a few entries in the Unibet Golden Mile on the Friday. Um, Case, I mean, you could, you could almost set your watch Case, if we get thunderstorms or any rain, you can guarantee he's going to go very close. On soft ground, he is a very good animal. He's a, he, you know, he's a pleasure to have around, he's a gentleman. He'll have a chance in any race. And Beat Le Bon, of course, has won the race before. Beat Le Bon, yeah, we're going to hold him up. And wait for the Unibet Golden Mile. I think he won three years ago. And, you know, he seems to run very well at that track. And hopefully we'll do that again if we can get him settled. And that, that is a crucial thing with him, isn't it? He sort of almost has to fall out the stores, get oh, he'll fall out for the, the first six, anyway. and That's then a pick up. And then it doesn't matter if he pulls too hard because you've got to make up the ground anyway. But if he settles, he'll have a big chance. Uzo? Uzo, that, that's, his, that's his target. He's a good horse. And he didn't show it at York, but he ran extremely well at Royal Ascot in the Hunt Cup. And that's always a good prep for the Unibet Golden Marley. He'll have a big chance. Probably, you know, he'd probably be favourite, second favourite. And Dingle? Dingle's going to go to the mile and a quarter, which is the last race on the last day. So I'll probably have been lynched by then, but he would have a good chance. He's capable of an awful lot more than he's shown so far. But I do think he wants a mile and a quarter. OK, in the Unibet Phillies handicap, over a mile, you've got uh, four entries in that. Uh, let's kick off with Shine For You. Shine For You, I'm not sure she'll go there if the ground is very quick, but she's a filly with ability um, and she's group placed. So because of the prize money on offer, she, she might turn up. There's nothing wrong with her, but she, all her form is better on soft ground. So Ayla is another one of our shikabs. She's been running consistently well in handicap. She's creeped up the weights a little bit which doesn't help when you go to a very competitive meeting, but she would have a chance. She can run up to, you know, level of 90, but she can put in a 70-odd as well. So hopefully the right filly turns up. And we've seen how well the, the offspring of Frankel have done. You've got um, Angan, who's by Frankel, out of a, another Guinness winner in Natagora. Yeah, she's, uh, she's a lovely filly. And she'll like it around there. Um, and she should have a chance. She ran in a very tight race last time at Newmarket, and that was a good race. A um, lot of improving, unexposed types taking us on. 
and we ran very well for a long way. Yeah, she might well take her chance at Goodwood. And if we look at the Unibet Stewards Cup on the final day, just the one entry for you, Lexington Dash for Midland Park Racing. Well, you need to have a stone in hand to win the Stewards Cup. And I'm not sure he has that, but he's coming down the waist a little bit. He's a decent horse, and this is a good prize worth having a go at. And Midland Park, you know, they're not afraid to, to throw their hat in the ring and, and have a go, and that's exactly what we're doing. Monsieur Chevalier and Zebedee, the most recent winners to score in the Malcolm um, for you, Richard. Um, this year you could be represented by, by Gubbas. Could he be better than either of those two? Well, I'd be happy if he's as good. I don't mind better. Gubbas is a very good horse. You saw that in the Super Sprint. I hope he, he doesn't get as warm as he did at the Super Sprint. Um, he's going to be in the Malcolm and the Richmond. And he'll have a very good chance in either, I think. Um, you know, he's a very quick horse. Six will suit him, and, but he's equally effective over five. We've got Symphony Perfect. Uh, I think this is the ideal race for her. She was second in the Super Sprint, ran probably the race of her life. That 50 grand conditions race for fillies only at Goodwood didn't attract a very big field last year. I don't know why. A lot of prize money and not a bad race by any means. And perfect for her. Comes at the right time, you know, the right trip. Lovely, jubbly, hopefully. Tash Kent is a very nice horse by acclamation. And as you know, Al Shikav like to have runners at the, at the um, Qatar Goodwood Festival. And, it, you know, they're big sponsors of it, but they're not having runners there for the sake of it, just to have our colours around, you know. They go there if they're going to run well. I think this is a very nice horse and hopefully he, he will run well. Cabracken is also a two-year-old that we've got going to Goodwood. He will probably need this. You know, he's a breezer and then we give him time off. He's come back, he's got ability, but he's, not, he's a bit of a slow learner. He's a very nice horse. Whatever he does at Goodwood, he will improve for, but he's a very nice horse. And Razzle Dazzle? Razzle Dazzle goes quite well. Um, very big, strong horse, but he goes quite well. I'm not sure if he'll handle Goodwood, but some horses do and some horses don't. And we might, I'm going to take him to Newbury for a piece of work tomorrow morning. If he does that well, I, you know, we might well take the chance. And that was my next question. What, what, do you, what do these horses have to show for you to believe that they will handle? Well, they have to have, an, a, you know, there's no point going there with, you know, no point going to a gunfight with a water pistol. You know, they need to show they have a bit of ability and they need to be match fit. The only way to get match fit is play matches. So the nearest thing we can do to that is take them to a race course and give them a bit of work. For the two-year-old maiden, we have... We've got a very nice horse by Le Havre called Monet Sunrise. He's very quick, but he's got a bit of a temperament and I hope he doesn't boil over. We're trying to keep him relaxed here, but you've seen him go through the gates this morning and do a bit of work. He, he's a nice horse, I hope. And before we finish this little stable tour, um, what's the Han and Hot Pot for the Qatar Goodwood Festival? Which one will you be disappointed? I know you've got Scott, some chance. Snow Lantern, ridiculous question. But we're looking for some two-year-olds. We want, we want, we want, we want a two-year-old two, what, what do you want a two-year-old for? What's the hot pot? Snow Lantern. She's three. No surprise to anyone. It's my hope. <laughs> if I had one running for my life, it would probably be Lucille. But Snow Lantern, if she reprodu reproduces the form of last time, she would be very hard to beat. And she's getting such a following. 